My name is Zana. I'm 22 and I come from northern part of Syria. After arriving to the immigration office, you basically have to queue. I would actually suggest to the asylum seekers that they don't arrive at the weekend because unfortunately there will be no place for them to, you know, sleep or stay over. Uh, they will be mostly spending their nights in the street. There are three steps when you ask asylum. So the first one is basic info, like your name, where do you come from, what language do you speak? And here I will like strongly suggest that people say their mother tongue. Then you have uh, taking your fingerprints on a system called Eurodac so that you know they can uh, check if you have been in a different country or not. The third uh, step is the doctor checks, which is actually, uh, you know, asking about, uh, you know, medical issues and etc. And also, you know, asking about vaccinations that you have done already. And then they give you a paper and send you to a center. Most of the times they ask if you have family members in Belgium uh, in order to send you close to there. But it is always not the case because most of the times the centers are full, so they try to kind of find place. At the immigration office, in the uh, you know first interview, it was important to not lie about the first European country or the other co European countries that you have been, because uh, as I said in the third step, they do take your fingerprints, and if you have been in a different country, they do see it. So we talked uh, about all the details and why did we pass from that country and why we are in Belgium and etc. I would say that it is really important uh, to keep it short because if you don't keep it short, they would keep it short, they would make it really short. It is important to tell as much as the important things. I had to wait really long for the long interview, which is at the CGRS. Um, because uh, I had a Dublin procedure. In general, it is uh, stressing. You always have this, you know, side thinking of, uh, you know, will I be able to stay here or, or will they transfer me back or, you know, these kind of things. For the long interview, actually, I prepared with the lawyer, uh, you know, asking different documents, you know, um, preparing them, uh, printing them out, uh, I don't know, highlighting them and etc. I think that was also important that I didn't lie. We got a letter uh, which was, uh, you know, saying that we are invited for our long interview at uh, CGRS. I think the big advantage of the CGRS office that it is next to the train station. So yeah, it was not really difficult for us to find it. While waiting in the waiting room, it was really stressful, I cannot lie about it. A lot of eyes, you know, who are stressing as well and in the same situation as you. And after that, uh, my lawyer arrived, so uh, he was there, he discussed with me, and then the protection officer came to pick me up. During the long interview, uh, there were a lawyer, a protection officer, and uh, an interpreter. The role of the protection officer, you know, she or he asks questions, um, and they're mostly specialized. Uh, about the countries that you come from. He would ask about, you know, uh, my own town, uh, you know, the streets, the reason of leaving your home country, uh, really kind of go in deep and tell them, you know, what really happened and how it happened and why really you had to move. I think that was also important that I didn't lie. Uh, based on those answers, uh, they uh, kind of decide to accept you, uh, to give you like, you know, refugee status, subsider protection or to refuse your case. So the role of the interpreter is to translate everything uh, literally. 
the interpreter doesn't have any influence uh, at the decision. She was objective, uh, you know, while translating. Uh, because after you know the interview you also get uh, the chance to check um, everything because everything is written the lawyer was sitting next uh, to me of course not uh, you know he is not able to say anything during the interview but I really felt comfortable with my family, we had only a family document that would prove that we are a family and you know our names and our date birth and that's all. Um, all the other uh, documents that were connected to my own story, I have printed them out um, online. I think uh, what was actually a big help for the production officer that I was talking about it but I was also providing the document and so I was able to prove it in the same time and I think it helped uh, my case a lot you know some of the documents were asked by the production officer actually which we didn't have in our hand and you know I just sent all of uh, these documents uh, you know with the email so it can still uh, it is possible to send them after you know the long interview but I would suggest if you have things with you just you know bring everything and don't think about if it's right if it's wrong because they make a um, you know copy of everything so after the long interview um, I felt really uh, you know fine and I felt that you know um, that I don't have anything on my shoulders anymore um, and I was like a bird actually it was I was so happy that uh, it finished I was not really kind of trying to think a lot about the decision because uh, I didn't want it to affect my life and my routine. So I tried to focus mostly on work and as my friends, you know, uh, spending time with my family and etc. I tried to keep myself busy because it helps me to, you know, kind of become like uh, calmer. You know, after uh, the long interview, um, we waited for the decision basically and um, we got it after I think 20 days uh, which was super quick and there were people who uh, waited uh, you know for a really long time but also who waited really shorter than me I know that there were people who got accepted in one week and there were really people who you know three months, four, or maybe more. First we got a letter, um, you know, but we had to pick that letter up and uh, I got actually a call from my lawyer that how it was 